I am here in Las Vegas at Con Expo 2017, and we're going to go over some quick tips on setup of the new Cutmaster 60i. Um, the first question I get on this product is related to input voltage. This particular product is multi-volt. It's capable of 208 to 480 volt single phase. It automatically detects the input voltage. There's nothing the user has to do to change those settings. So inside the operating manual, we have a table that based on the input voltage gives you the recommended fuse and the amp draw. If you want to get full output capability of this unit on a 230 volt circuit, you want to make certain you have a 50 amp breaker. Once you've located your unit and you know what your input voltage is and the requirements for that, you want to make certain you have the right input air pressure so that you are getting the proper operating pressure at the torch. You'll notice on our quick start guide that we list 90 to 125 PSI input pressure at the machine. This will assure that you have the operating pressure set properly for the torch when the air is flowing. Now we're going to go over some of the um, features of the display. At the top, you see the amps output. You can adjust the amperage all the way down to 10 and max output of 60 amps with a simple rotation of the knob. To change the cut mode, depress the knob and you'll see that it'll cycle through a series of uh, modes. So this is latch mode. This allows you to latch the uh, trigger on the torch. This is expanded metal mode, also known as rapid auto restart. This is per, uh, gouge mode and this is our purge mode. The lower knob, when you depress it, you'll notice this image will change and you'll see additional segments light up. Each of these segments represents additional lead lengths for the torch. As you increase the torch lead length, you need to increase your air pressure. So you'll notice that as I increase this, the gas optimizer will change. And what it's doing is suggesting that the user increase their air pressure if this is their true setup. This represents a 100 foot lead length torch. When I press it again, you'll notice the light at the top changed from an SL60 torch to an SL100. And again, we'll cycle through the different lead lengths. The first length represents a torch up to 35 feet. The second length is up to 50. 75 and 100. When I press it again, it goes to our SLV torch and the length. And then cycles back to the default of the SL60 torch. As we increase the lead length, you'll notice that the segment below the green, which is in yellow, lit up. This is suggesting the user increase their air pressure for optimal cut quality and consumable parts life. But we don't prevent the user from adjusting their air pressure either higher or lower if they prefer those settings for a desired outcome. So now we're going to power the unit on. When you watch the display, you'll notice there's a slight delay. You'll see this code here followed by a 110. That's the firmware revision. And then you see another code, that's a checksum, that's used by service centers to, uh, for them to know that the firmware has not been corrupted. Then it comes to the default setting. The icon up here reflects AC voltage supplied to the unit. When we power the unit down, it's normal to see the EO2 error code. That means low voltage, which we turned it off and then the icon in the lower left lit also. That's just the fault indicator that coincides with an error message. Some common error messages that you will see on the display, and anytime you see an error message, you'll notice this icon in the lower left will illuminate. That's a fault indicator, 
and then you'll also see an E followed by a number, which represents a specific fault for the unit. If I disconnect the torch at the handle, you will notice that the unit shows the fault indicator with a specific error code in EO4, and then also the tip of the torch image starts to flash, which suggests a parts in place error. You'll see this anytime you disconnect the torch from the power supply front, disconnect the torch between the lead and the handle, or anytime you remove the shield cup and activate that same fault circuit. When you reattach, the unit will clear that fault and go back to normal. Another common fault indicator on the display would be if we had insufficient air pressure for the unit. The fault indicator would light, we'd see an E016 and then the gas cylinder would flash to help the user understand that the fault is associated with low or high input pressure. So the Cutmaster 60i has the same input air pressure requirements as the rest of the Cutmaster line and is common in the industry. In general, 90 to 125 PSI max is what's required for this unit from an input pressure perspective. Common causes of low input pressure range from long hoses, exceedingly long hoses, between where the unit's located and where the pressure is supplied at the start of the line. Uh, it could be running off of a uh, remote air compressor and the pressure is not set high enough, or it could be that the pressure is set too high. You do not want to exceed 125 PSI input pressure. When consumables are approaching the end of their useful life, you'll notice the front of the display, there's an icon that will begin to flash. It does not prevent the user from continuing to cut, it just alerts the user that it's time to change their consumable parts to ensure optimal cut quality. When you unbox the unit, you have on the very top a quick startup guide. It's nice and simple. These device icons here give you uh, basic information about the product as far as the max amps output, the voltage, and the phase. Always safety first. And then we move into the setup of the product from the work lead and ground clamp to attaching the torch. The inlet pressure, this unit requires 90 to 125 PSI. You need this inlet pressure to assure the proper operating pressure at the torch. On the back side, on the back side we show the location of the switch, adjusting amperage with the top knob, anywhere from 10 to 60 amps. When you depress that same knob, it toggles you through the different modes of operation, from the standard cut mode to a gouge mode, latch mode, expanded metal cutting or rabbit auto restart, and a purge mode. The bottom knob is used to set the torch style and lead length. Each time you depress that knob, it goes from the initial setup, the 0 to 35 foot torch lead length. The next segment reflects a 50 foot. The next segment, 75 foot. And the third segment, 100 foot. And we have three different torch styles that can be adapted to this unit. It's important to get this set correctly. This information, along with the amps and the cut mode, determine the recommended gas pressure setting. So after we set these other things, then we want to adjust the gas pressure. The green LED indicates where we recommend pressure to be set for recommended uh, our best cut quality and parts life. But you can always adjust up or down. It's very important to read the operating manual. You should always read the operating manual because there's a lot of good information in the operating manual. Um, 
Included in here is our spare parts kit. This unit comes with some additional uh, spare parts, your electrodes and tips, as well as a label to show what additional consumables are available.